Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Red Flood using the latest patch at the time of the recording of June 3rd, I think 2022 or June 4th or whatever. But we're playing as Austria, everyone's favorite Austria. With everyone's favorite Franz, the Ferdinand, the first. But we gotta talk about the new cabinet. After the la latest general election in 1935, and a victory for the Christlich Sozialia, I, I butchered that, Christlich Sozial Partei over the Social Democratische Arbeiters Partei, His Majesty the Emperor and King uh, Franz, Franz Ferdinand I has moved to form a new imperial government, with Ignaz Seipel as Mr. President. The clock turns, the hand chimes, and the SDAP and the CS wing swing in circles, both furthering and developing our empire. Yet serious opposition is slowly mounting. Opposition that threatens to break apart the entire imperial system, the Alldeutsch Heimat und Volkspartei, led by the militant pangeminist Adolf Pelz, uh, sits fiercely in the House of Deputies, roaring and spitting at the so-called aristocratic fat cats in the House of Lords on the streets. Their men clash with the Authentische Sozialdemokratische Arbeiterpartei, communist militants who split from the SDAP in the wake of their patriotic support for His Majesty in the Great War. Alas, all this is not a priority at the moment, as right now, the most important thing is making sure the new government's gears are greased as the endless march forwards forward continues. Uh, able opposition. Unlike the German Social Democrats, the Social Democratische Arbeiter Partei has remained loyal to the essential principles of the Austrian government. Though it took some work to get them there, they have officially renounced any support for annexation into the German regime to our north, and are willing to participate in the Reichsrat and other official organs of the state. As the new Austrian government is inaugurated, we can reach out to Karl Seitz to renew the tacit understanding that treating one another as legitimate is mutually beneficial. If the reformists channel their frustration into his party rather than the alternatives. And the brothers came. Of course, the road to a loyal Social Democratic Party left malcontents behind the so-called authentic SDAP and Communist KPO are threats not only to the imperial state structure, but to Austrian nation nationalhood as a whole. These cat paws of Berlin are subject to a plenty of harassment from the government and the paramilitaries, but still do command a base in some sectors of the cities. It's important for us to keep an eye on the meetings and a boot on their necks. Lest our northern nemesis see an opportunity. Preparing uh, imperial celebrations, though. We've done much to claw our way back from the disasters of 1918, when the uh, Kaiser Franz Josef I passed two years prior. His successor was tasked with seeing Austria Hungary through the storm, just as his uncle had in 1848 and 1867. In the face of Russian steel, overbearing Prussians, and all manner of rebel and subversive, he steered the ship true. As we near the 20th anniversary of the Kaiser's coronation, it's important for the populace to remember these glories, and the glory of Austria at large. There is still something worth holding on to in these institutions. A sense of security. Social malaise runs rampant in the Empire because of the growing boldness of socialist trade unions and agitators, alongside the ever-vigilant eye of the Red Behemoth or North. Many within our government express the need of finishing up rep repression campaigns on the left, especially the ASDAP. The ASDAP has been a ble thorn bleeding the monarchy for far too long, hurting us with terror antics and violent demonstrations everywhere. However, with some doubt whether this is a wise choice. Persecuting the left in an overt and direct manner might have the exact opposite effect we desire. And said embolden and engirthen, oh, engirth, the militants. We are at a crossroads, and His Imperial Majesty's cabinet must make a firm decision against a ticking bomb. If you use a full weight of the state to persecute the ASDAP, we risk a redoubled terror campaign. And to draw the ire of Germany. If we, on the other hand, do nothing, we let these terrorists and revolutionaries do as they please with the consequences. The decision is complex, but very few ministers argue the final result, which is to show the socialists the empire will not be intimidated, versus to hold our own hand and not crack down on the left. We're gonna show the socialists the empire will not be intimidated. And then strength and ties to Rome. Since the end of the Valkyrie, our diplomatic situation has been a delicate balancing act. Toward North and East, the communists lick their bloody fangs in IVN Hungary. The revolutionary Slavs and the Fumunian inspiration are no less than mortal foes. But flanking our southern enemy is Italy, another bastion of the old order. Despite our troubled past and the movements of Boniface X to recognize the Hemor Republic up north, we have a mutual understanding and a brotherhood of faith. After all, we were one of the first to recognize the Leonin city state after it was established. Therefore, it is imper imperative to renew this relationship both with the government in Rome and with the throne of St. Peter. Uh, gau gauging the GSS. <coughs> in 1918, returning soldiers kept uh, leapt into the trenches once more to defend the empire against the Magyar communist aggression, forming the Germanische uh, Sturm Sturmscharen. Since then, a certain Adolf Pols association of militants has been useful, if increasingly unruly howling by our side, both in their opposition to Viennese communists and their ongoing watch on the German border. However, their hateful and nationalist ideology is utterly repugnant, and unfortunately, recent years have seen the association and its leadership grow more bold in voicing what they think should be done to solve our ongoing problems, as well as some choice words for what to do with the Imperial House. It would be prudent for us to meet with the charismatic Pols to ensure his priorities don't match our own, unless this mad dog decide to buck his leech and turn his bark into a... 
I know part of that will never die. As we launch our celebrations, the legacy of centuries weighs heavily, but it is also our sword and shield. From counts in Switzerland to guardians of the Eastern Holy Roman Empire, this royal house has its held its station throughout tragedy and triumph. In the face of republicanism, nationalism, socialism, or whatever horrors are concocted under Zenitism or Fumeanism, Fumeanism, the order will continue, continue and endure. Austria est imperio optime unita. A winter's walk. And we have a couple of decisions here. Uh, you can read about these if you like. A winter's walk. It was a chilly February day in the Hofburg's Burgarten, and Franz Ferdinand's hands were shaking. The cold wind chilled him to his bones, yet the icy breeze was not what was shaking him, but his age. A wind... He was approaching 20 years of rule, and he just turned 72 a couple months prior. Wow. Some of his subjects in the streets even jested and called him senile, the nerve, although they were not far from the truth. His memory uh, had begun fading, and more often these days, it was his nephew Carl running things in his name. Franz Ferdinand shook his head and began to walk faster. 20 years. He had done a lot in those years, quite a lot. Although the Empire had shrunk, it was all in all, and not gained to lose those pesky Huns. Those architects have venom and poisoning the lifeblood of the entire structure. His federalization attempts have been going swimmingly, and the Czechs have proven to be much better subjects than he had expected. And he expected highly from the outset. Franz Ferdinand's head began to hurt as he tried to recall all the events of the last 20 years. Um, uh, those magnificent years. Sure, the revolution had threatened his rule, and the issue of the pelentulant pan germanic rabble always tended to rear its ugly head, but the common folk had never been more peaceful. That's why they had a Kaiser, after all, to lead them and guide them by the grace of God. <coughs> Franz Ferdinand's chest suddenly started feeling tight, and he slowed his walking pace. He tried to put it out of his mind by thinking about the future and what would happen to the Empire once he eventually passed on to heaven. In a decade or so, he was sure that his nephew Carl would be a good Kaiser, but he worried sometimes about that boy. He was too soft. Easily persuaded by populist rhetoric and propaganda, it made him popular, sure, but in the wrong hands. He could upend the entire monarchy in these times, it was all Austria had. The Kaiser was a sum of stability and safety without a Kaiser. Thud, thud, thud. Franz Ferdinand's heart was tighter than a drum, even though he had been standing in place for minutes at this point. As vision started swimming and his eyes sh oh, shot wide open. Dear God, someone help me, please. His speech was cut short by a wave of pain and he fell to the floor. This was it, was it not? The end, and so soon. He had still so much left to do, and so much. His eyes, slowly closing, saw a figure approaching him from above. An angel, coming to take him to heaven, perhaps? His lips creaked out, a soft answer to this grace, and Franz Ferdinand's last words, I'm ready, Lord. Oh, crap. Oh, the Kaiser's dead. Emperor Franz Ferdinand brought peace to our lands. He stood like a bulwark against the red tide of Germany and the madness that swept through Europe in the aftermath of the Great War. It was he who, in the face of so many crises and so many adversities, strengthened the position of the Austrian Empire, bringing prosperity, peace, and tolerance. However, all that is good must come to an end, and so has happened with the rule of Franz Ferdinand. Our beloved emperor was found dead after a heart attack. Sadly, it was too late to save him. However, even when stars explode and die, their light lasts for centuries. The service of Franz Ferdinand will never be forgotten, but now we must look to the future. I think if you have a heart attack, I could be wrong. You want to start coughing and beating the crap out of your chest so you can. Can't save yourself? As far as I remember, I could be wrong about that, though. Long live the Kaiser! The future lies in Karl. Franz Ferdinand's nephew and successor. Franz Ferdinand, despite his merits, was always a bit closed, skeptical. Some might even say he was a par paranoid. This was an old man who experienced many human tragedies. It was understandable, but we cannot close ourselves to the world on our subjects. We'll stop the graveyard hyenas feasting on a tragedy, be they iconoclastic Marxists for which there are no sanctity, or Poles and his attacking a monarchy. Our new Kaiser must put an end to this, showing all of our subjects Christian mercy and continuing on the path of reformation. Look at the left. Oh, crap. <clears throat> oh, why not? The left has always been negative about a rule for some reason, even if we have recently opened up to them. The fact is that we have criticized and stopped a few radicals, but our goals are not that different. We both want every human being to be equal no matter what origin. And we also want to care for the workers' well-being. There's certainly a threat of understanding somewhere, and we'll be able to sit down at the same table as brothers. We'll convince the left that even if Karl was a crown, his heart is in the right place, so they don't have to worry about anything. Karl, crowned in Vienna. Today, there was a long-awaited event for the subject of the Empire. The new Kaiser will soon be ascending the throne. In a solemn procession, to the fanfare and cries of the citizens of Vienna, his soon-to-be Imperial Majesty went from Hofburg Palace to the Cathedral of St. Stephen so that he may be bestowed, or bestow the blessing of the Lord and his rule on this bright day. I declare that my whole life, whether long or short, will be devoted to serving you, servants of our glorious empire, the family to which we all belong. Every radio-owning household in the empire was kissed by the Kaiser's soft and caring words immediately followed by a translator repeating the speech in check for the Bohemian major minority. Leaving the upper hall, the emperor, accompanied by lively and jubilant crowds to the solemn beat of drums and trumpets, went to Prague to be doubly crowned, as tradition requires. The police eyed many who stood out among the ranks of the celebrators, as constantly watching the motorcade of the almost Kaiser. A handful of troublemakers were arrested and interrogated, and while some of them were just curious onlookers, others bore a more suspicious design. There were these few were sent into the custody, and may God make sure that there is all there is to the matter. Long live the new Kaiser, guide us to prosperity. <clears throat> and... What's next? Ah, I guess I'm put apart. The coronation of Cairo the first. On the way to Prague, everything was surprisingly calm. When the motorcade began to drop to Winchester Square, <clears throat> Carl looked at his wife. Oh, how gorgeous was Zita. She smiled, and when she caught his eye, but there was a little hint of an ease. He put his hand on her arm. Don't worry, everything will go smoothly. 
Oh, Yosef, uh, Supa, visibly upset that there was no chance to carry out the plan and today, left the coffee shop and began to light a cigarette, looking at the street. He turned numb with surprise, Carl in the flesh, in his cottage, so close. Joseph was seized by a storm of emotions, a gun was still in his coat, stubbing out a smoldering piece of assurance. He moved towards the rows of people, trying not to attract the attention of the police. Hearing the cheering of the crowd, the monarch turned to the people and stood up, waving his hand to the public. Joseph felt like his heart was going to explode with ecstasy as he made his way through the crowd closer to the Habsburg motorcade. Yes, he was lucky indeed to get so close to the route. There was even a roar of firecrackers from some small children. Uh, a moment like this only comes once in a lifetime. Carl's already reclining back in his seat, but he caught a glimpse of Joseph's face contorted with a crazy smirk, waving a pistol clumsily. <clears throat> The terrorist managed to make only two shots in this general direction, grazing his chest, after which the policeman reacted and broke his wrist with a baton. While some of the police fled in panic, the Imperial escort rushed at full speed to the end of the street. The people seized a revolutionary from the police. He was beaten to a bloody pulp within seconds, so so quick Carl could catch a glimpse of the sardonic smile among the crazed mob as his vehicle sped away. The Emperor shuddered and looked away without a second thought. The people's will in the Emperor's name. If you're a revolution, if you like it by this, please go ahead. Let's pray for Austria. Oh, on your miss. The Kaiser yet lives, but the trouble in our nation is far from over. Now that we have avoided catastrophe, we must turn our attention towards the relentless suppression of a terrorist activity and investigating these groups which have a vested interest in Kaiser's murder. Sitting now, starting now, there will be no place for the traitorous rats to hide. <clears throat> oh, God, sort of damn, because not good. Carl, oh, I'm so sorry. Vipers within. <clears throat> yeah. France Ferdinand's liberalization and reforms might have been well-intentioned in a step in the right direction, but they have certainly created their own set of problems. Socialists and regionalists in par the parliament and local governments snicker and lament the fact our emperor is not dead, and who's to say what the extent of this traitor's attitude? Only redoubted vigilance, crackdowns on subversive elements, and tighter background checks for politicians can reveal to us who are the traitors in our midst. What do we have around here? Hmm, it's nice. Daily political power gain. We don't have anybody here. <laughs> Franz Ferdinand I is currently the nation leader. Uh, probably not right now. Um, I want to get some army XP, so... Uh, speed. This is lots of more defense. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, my bad cough. Uh, current ruler really parting is only 2%. Not good. An oath of fealty. Well, let's do an oath of loyalty. Remember that, please, your head as well. Enough is enough. For too long, our government has graciously tolerated the presence of parties and politicians who refuse to affirm their loyalty to Austria. Any man who seeks the downfall of our glorious nation should not be allowed to serve the public. From here on, every prospective member of the Austrian government must take an oath of loyalty to our nation, and the breaking of which being punishable by death. <clears throat> ich bin der Reichsrat. Due to ever growing national security concerns, the Reichsrat has been temporarily suspended. Instead, the Kaiser has been given emergency powers to make decisions that the Reichsrat would normally be needed to vote on. The proposal was actually brought forth by an independent, uh, uh, loyal to the Emperor and not the Kaiser himself. In response to uh, the proposal, the Reichsrat members were said to have cheered in applause with only a few holdouts remaining in pitiful silence. In an oath of fealty. Oh boy. Despite the obvious paradox, there are some among our government who swear loyalty to Austria, but not fealty to the Kaiser. Karl, the situation has allowed for fair, dangerous amounts of republicanism and anti habsburg sentiment to come into being within our nation. But time we put an end to it. If you are not loyal to Karl, then you do not deserve to represent to his subjects, pretty much. Balancing the Bohemians. Bohemia is a strange case. On one hand, Bohemia is responsible for some of the most violent extremists in the Empire, while on the other, they have produced some of our most loyal non-Austrian subjects. It's obvious that something needs to be done in retaliation for the attempted murder of a Kaiser. After all, in an ideal situation, that devil would never have been able to cross the border. However, should the bulk of Bohemia be punished for the actions of a few? The situation requires that we answer yes, but our punishments should not be too harsh, even as we know that this is somewhat unfair. Ah, uh, get more fuel, because we can. Fuel is good. Fuel is very good. Demolition of Babel. Even after the suspension of the Reichstag, they still gather like vermin. They meet in our city squares and ramble on, talking to each other for hours on end about nothing productive. These parliamentarians <clears throat> claim to be carrying on the legacy of democracy in Austria despite the Kaiser's will, but who knows better than the Kaiser? What is he doing is best for democracy, and these rats are trying to ruin it by introducing it too early. Their meetings must be disrupted, and their ringleaders arrested immediately. Wolves without. And although it's true that there are many enemies within, the dangers that come from without are much more sinister. Hungarians, Germans, and Yugoslavians all alike are working tirelessly to tear society apart, it seems. Therefore, we must equally work hard in order to dispense, isolate, or disperse, and destroy these movements. Arrests and executions. One unthinkable under the rule of the of the rule of the People's Kaiser, mass arrests and executions confirmed and suspected terrorists are taking place across Austria. While it's not a desirable outcome, the extremists have forced their hand. Once this regrettable purge is over, we shall see the sun rise over new Austria, empty of traitors and parasites. 
Oh, Red Vienna. Drip by drip, the enemy bleeds out. Slowly, man by man, they rat each other out to escape momentary pains. Simple, animalistic creatures, we exploit their lack of honor and turn them against one another in their final moments. The cement, they will feel warm on their face as their flesh turns cold. Now, we've sent volunteers to Spanish Civil War. We don't like them. We don't like the other side. But I really... There was the communes, but you know, whatever. we got progressives versus accelerationists. Either way, we lose. But we get army XP, and, uh, well... That's really why we're here. We don't care about either side, really. I personally don't care about either side, so... I'm here for the army XP and to lose a lot more equipment. God dang it. Um, really? Just something like that? That's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we can use a little more supply through here, but whatever. Because Drain pulls slugs. Adolf Bose is a resistant to a definition as he is to the Kaiser. While he labels himself as a simple nationalist, his economic plans include sweeping nationalization of key resources, a state trade union, and increased class collaboration. We suggest social sympathies. On top of this all, he seeks to unite all Germans under a republic, and his students are very fond of harassing our law abiding history. We should limit the activity of nationalist groups so as to limit Bose's influence. We could use a time and place where we don't have to hurt ourselves like that too much. Can you guys actually... Oh, that's five divisions here. Holy crap. You might as well take this one if you can. <coughs> These guys aren't bad. Our army's not very big, but it, division count-wise, it's actually not bad at all. Do we have enough artillery? 300. We could throw them on here, probably. That'd be fine. Gives a little bit more punch for everything. The other fighting's pretty good as well. Um, it's not bad. Grab that, too. Austrians, not Germans. Certain deluded th fools and jackbooted militiamen will tell you that Austria and Germany are the same. That's going to be further from the truth. Germany is Protestant. Austria is Catholic. Germany is a, a communist republic. Austria is a traditional monarchy. The Habsburgs do not lay claim to the German throne as the rightful rulers of Germany are isolated in Prussia, while their empire stands strong and proud. <clears throat> Austrianist just sends the bounds of language and ethnicity. An Austrian is someone who lives under the rule of our emperor, a member of a greater family of peoples. Avilia. Salamanca. <clears throat> well, I would like to help attack. We don't got a ton of supply. But if they were to attack somewhere like here, and we get some certain backup, we'd be okay probably. No backup? Seriously? Alright. Well, we tried. There you go. Should be able to do well here. Even though we're locking a few things like artillery, but that's okay. They're not doing so good either. Schwarz und Gold on the Rot. <clears throat> Red, the color of blood, are one of the three colors of Germany. And most contemptible, the color of socialism. By rejecting and even banning the prominent display of red flags and symbols, we thereby reject Germanism and socialism in one fell swoop. We should never be red, therefore, we should never be defeated. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, I guess we're gonna go to early mobilization first. <coughs> sure, yeah, huh? And heil dem Kaiser, heil dem Land. The problem of sunrise in Austria has come. Our enemies are dead or too weak to resist, and our people are content under the rule of Karl and Christ. And we no longer earn Christ for the first time in a long while. We can't tell the future, for we can barely understand the recent past, but one thing's certain Austria shall live on. Nice. People are killing each other, pretty normal. Can we take Madrid? That'd be really good, actually. That's a supply point, isn't it? Yes, it is. Getting that supply point would devastate these three. I mean, it gives you a little bit of supply here, but still. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Nice. There. Hang out with them. Take that towel and you can kill them, and at least start these guys all off. Rolota Rundelik. We've got a good job so far. We have 16 other divisions just kind of hanging out, having a good time. That's good. What does this one do? Remove the Sword of Damocles. Oh god, yeah. yeah. This is where you want to go. Wow, we can add a whole one more plane at all times. How great is that? <coughs> well, they're using less planes themselves, which is good. So, progress, yes. No convoys, makes sense. Hey! An encirclement. Not a pretty decent one of that. One, two, three, four, maybe minimum divisions. Five. 
a beautiful thing. I once again I do apologize for coughing so much. Uh, despotism, political power gain. Keep up political power. Not very much, but you know, not bad. Oh, it's already researched. It's good. They're already and <clears throat> The Blessed Ascendancy. Despite Austria being a holy empire, Kaiser is still currently restricted by the government of the Constitution. While the state as quo might be well liked by Social Democrats, our new administration is no interest in their opinions. From this day forth, our Kaiser should be an absolute monarch. Yeah. Expand the emergency. Oh, yes. Yes, it's true that our enemies are in retreat, but the emergency in our nation is far, is far from over. So long as Czechs, Marxists, and Germans surround our government and people, the emergency shall remain. As it should. No one likes Marxists. Except Marxists, and even sometimes they don't like themselves. So what do we have here? We're out of guns and trucks. We have artillery, and we have a little bit of anti-air as well. I definitely want to use some anti-air. <coughs> Very nice. Slightly more piercing, and just help support the attack. You don't actually have to go in. Ah, just. Popping their heads. I love popping heads. Pop. And he's going to go pop. Goodbye. Good job, guys. Ah, Madrid. Good place. Prague at last. The square in front of the St. Vitus Cathedral is quiet today. The only sounds of marching soldiers whose boots trembled in the couple streets. The crowd was not allowed to the venue for fear of another attacker, especially as the target of the previous attack was to be the centerpiece of the event again. A dark armored car rolled in and stopped before the main entrance. Carl von Habsburg and his wife Zeta left the vehicle, resembling a, more of a hearse than a limousine. With calculated grace, they approached the cathedral gates. Inside, there was nobody but the lonely Archbishop, Caspar. The sullen mass began the moment the couple sat down. It was quiet and slow and finished in what felt like an eternity. Husband and wife approached the altar and knelt. The Archbishop began to recite the ritual prayers. Almighty and everlasting God, creator of all things, commander of angels, king of kings, and lord of lords, who caused your faithful servant Abraham to triumph over his enemies and gave many victories to Moses and Joshua. The leaders of your people exalted your humble servant David to the eminence of kingship and enriched Solomon with the ineffable gifts of wisdom and peace. Hear our humble prayers and multiply your blessings upon your servant, whom in prayerful devotion we consecrate your king. The Archbishop then blessed the oils and approached Carl and his wife. He drew a cross on the heads of the spouses. They did the same, and then his eminence approached the altar to take the coronation trinkets and regalia. They walked over to the pair again, except this royal crown, rod of virtue, and royal orb. He then placed the crowns on Carl and Zeta, handing them the sword and orb. The newly anointed emperor got up and looked at, up at the altar over which the crucifix, crucifix hung. Christ looked down at him with sad eyes, as if sympathetic to the times in which he was living. He softly exhaled, understanding Carl the first emperor of Austria, smiled and whispered something to itself. I will restore order, so help me God, amen. Dissolve the Imperial Council. Let us do away with all pretenses. Our Kaiser has no need of the Rexodots up until now is merely in a state of temporary suspension. The parliamentarians are eagerly waiting their chance to return to power today. They will be receiving some bad news. As the Rexodot will be dissolved immediately. As it should, as we go to partial mobilization. Help them out. Beautiful. Yeah, still love Not great. Not great, but hey, we need uh, one more plane here. We get a slight bit of uh, hair XP. Not much. But it is a slight bit. <coughs> Excuse me. What? Slovak Revolution? Oh! Thunder over Tatras. Oh! Conservatives, eh? How many can we send? Just one? Oh, we have 18. That's pretty good. Send them a division. Good, said good. Defend the lands. The weaker Hungary gets, the stronger we will have. To, or the better chance we had to I'll defend. Don't lose Bratislava, you ding dongs. Don't lose Bratislava. Fuel, because why not? <clears throat> well, another security. Add new ministers. I like the ministers. We're a new government. As of now, Kaiser Karl is the only recognized member of the Austrian government. While this sounds fantastic on paper, the reality is that there's no such thing as true autocracy, at least not on that one that works. The Kaiser needs a new government cabinet, one that represents the greatness of the Austrian we have built, or Austria that we've built, rather than falling into the same traps as the old government. No! They lost immediately, you god dang giraffe Slovaks. <coughs> you can never trust Slovaks, can you? You try to, but. Uh, disappointing. Let him come in and we'll attack here next to <clears throat> Stretches out their line just a wee bit. Oh. 
Are we losing here? Uh, if, our, if this division would help support the attack, we could do okay. N no, oh god, dang it. Let them move. Just us versus this one division will be fine. We have actually a lot of... There you go. That's better. Hey, 15 and 1. Nice. The Kaza can run an economy. You bet he can. For decades, the central economic question in Austria has been between a government-run economy and free market. Thanks to the new government, however, a compromise has been made where the Kaiser can gather the economy while still allowing our entrepreneurs to have the freedom and autonomy they are accustomed to. Hark the Imperial Council. Ooh. Head the Minister President. Or Minister President. Ooh. An Empire of Aristocrats. A Realm of Wonders. I kind of like that. Realm of Wonders sounds like fun. What are we missing here? Guns. Oh, God. Can we do this? That's not bad. Into artillery is pretty good. Fighters, get some cast, yes. We still got plenty of planes in the air. We can add one more. Not gonna make that much of a difference, but you know, you never know. <coughs> Guys, please help me out. Please. I'm trying to help you out. Help me help you. I got some ministers. Carl the First is his own minister, okay. What else do we have here? Grand speech. Get more weekly wars, but that's not bad. Despotism. Um, does this give us anything? Not really. Rally the nation. Eh. Civilian stuff. Stability. Well, that's not bad. Not great, though. Can't even add anybody now. Hits. Polsh. Let me make a description. Well, might as well. New fresh face. Matters of security. We may have dealt with the prominent and powerful enemies of our state, but there are still small cells out there. And only time will tell what new threats shall rise in the coming years. We must begin new intelligence initiatives in order to identify, track, and monitor those who would do us harm. Hey, and this is why you want to do encirclements. We already have 54 army XP. That's pretty darn good in my opinion. Weekly war score goes up for two weeks. So you get 1% more war score. That's not, that's not... Oh, no. No, it's for 90 days. Okay. So, how many weeks are in that? 9, 7, 1, 2, 0. 12-ish weeks? Yeah, roughly 12-ish. 12 times 7 is 70. 84. Yeah, so 84 days. So, 12... So 6% more war sport? That's not too bad. It's okay. Happy 1938 though, everybody. We're speeding along through here. Love it. Matters of uh, security. <clears throat> ah, help him out, why not? Uh, continuing Uncle's legacy, putting down the mad dogs. Ooh, that's not bad. Better as a ham. Ooh, training time goes down. Better ideology drift defense. Loot und Krona. A loyal ally. The SDAP, despite their differences with their Kaiser, is a historic part of a government. The two of them have seen eye to eye by nature of their enemies, and in times of crisis, strange bedfellows are made. Together they shall bring Austria in the 20th century. A party of moderate progress within the bounds of the law. <coughs> also, I'm trying to get more coordination here. Another instrument. Oh, they did it by themselves. Um... Trying to get more coordination gives you, I think, technically it directs all the damage where it should go. So instead of being spread out, I mean, it, I think it more concentrates on the top div division that's getting attacked. I think, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Brot und Kronen. No matter what details and petty differences may arise, the plight of the people boils down to two issues. They're poor, and they're hungry. Considering the vast wealth of our nobles and the government, distributing some wealth to go, too. Uh, the people's way seems an easy task, and one that will make the poorest among us externally grateful. Or eternally grateful. A spider web of industry. Thanks to the new organization of the economy, we've developed a genius economic model in which state-run enterprises acts as a nexus for the rise of private businesses around them so they can compete and profit. This will lead to a prosperous and industrialized Austria. The military-industrial complex. The next war is upon us, so much so that it's obvious to anyone with a functioning brain, so as we seek to revitalize our economy, we should seek to invest most of our time and resources in the military industry. The new arms industry will be simultaneously help us achieve our economic goals as well as assisting us in preparing for the next major European conflict. Capital is not almighty. 
Our recent reform may have been aimed at opening up the economy to both public and private business. Look at that. We do not mean to signal our pe to our people that they should worship capital over Christ. All those companies, as well as those fat cats who own them, shall pay proper taxes to the government and decent teeths to the church. I kind of prefer this one, because this sounds like fun. Army experience game is okay. His Majesty's laudable lords. Uh, he, the minister, prime minister, dude? No, no. Hark of the Imperial Council. Now that the Imperial Council has been reassembled, the SDAP advocates for returning it all to the former power. Though our nation has been in crisis for some time, we shall agree to these terms and orders for the people in opposition's faith and democracy. After all, we must not let the conditions that cause this mess recreate themselves. Fresh face. Face. Orkard von Klaudenhall, Kalergi, as a new arrival of the Austrian government, his father was a diplomat who faithfully served a country for many years. His son, on the other hand, is a visionary politician who has published numerous pieces regarding his beliefs in a truly cosmopolitan empire and aristocratic politics. To appoint him minister president, so that his ideas might improve society, but water under the bridge first. Then he expected the Kaiser to turn up his nose to the new government, given the legacy of the agitation that the left had in Austria, despite the loud and vocal complaints among members of the CS fearmongering and socialist intrusion in the government, exacerbated by the still fresh members of the Red Week. The causes welcomed into power the new leader of the parliament, Karl Seitz, from the SDAP. As part of his efforts to reach a lasting settlement with all the groups within the Austrian political sphere in the aftermath of the Viennese tragedy, the Kaiser had made his intentions known to reconcile with moderate leftist factions and any groups who are willing to reach a settlement. To this end, Seitz has affirmed the loyalty of the SDAP to the Empire's institutions and laws under a platform of respect for the rights of workers and social reforms for the ethnic minorities of the Empire. Also, a move that has alienated many conservatives in Austria who do not seem eager to trust anything that speaks of socialism, there's little doubt that this will be a popular move among the Austrian workers, sideline minorities, and those who are tired of political oppression. There is, to be sure, a rocky road ahead of us, but political stability and unity within Austria are last in sight. Uh, friendly face for the Empire. Not bad. Not bad. Sense of conscription? I could probably wait. Once again, we have nobody here, which sucks, sucks, sucks. Porsche wouldn't be bad. I don't want to uh, this person now. <coughs> and we'll read about him with a fresh face, but continuing the uncle's legacy. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was a pragmatic and kind leader, and his rule over our empire ended much too soon, but his legacy is alive and, of course, well. And we can be, can be seen in the federalization among our constitu constituent nations. While the goal of Karl's reforms is ultimate centralization, we should not forget the work of Karl's uncle, and it would be earnest so much needed favor with our minority peoples. Putting down the mad dogs. While Marxists and nationalists in Austria have been imprisoned and executed in mass, something the same cannot be said for outspoken racists and supremacists. These subversive elements continually sow disunity and act as if their ignorant beliefs are protected while they're under the law. They're solely mistaken in, in fertilizing hair. At present, the hair is overwhelmingly dominated by Austrians. This is because the entire empire operates under a single military structure and Austrians are much more likely to be recruited than any other ethnic group. We must remedy the situation by federalizing the hair and allowing other nations in the empire to create their own standing armies, of course. These armies will all be subject to the will of the Kaiser, but recruiting, training, and fighting process will be federalized. As part of the new course plan for the Kaiser, a new minister president was appointed today following the dissolution of the Imperial Council led by a curious and noble figure, Rika von Klaudenhof Kalergi, an Austrian of Japanese descent, as the new face of political scene. Aristocratic in his origins and elitist in his ideas, Kalergi is strongly identified with the classical conservatives of the old empire in the past. Many have pointed out his career and convictions to a mockingly dub the Count a Slenad Metternich, a moniker that stripped of its racism. Kalergi finds rather appropriate and bears with pride. In a speech to Parliament, Kalergi, Kalergi yeah, specified his idealized shape of the new cabinet. The only constituent worth representing is that of a man who adheres to the lifestyles of the gentlemen so fondly remembered and lionized in past generations. Those who, with great gallantry and resolute spirit, adhere to virtues such as honesty and fairness, respect to tradition and etiquette. Those good for nothings of the nationalist clubs, trade unions, and countryside militias are not worth their time with the government and the concerns scarcely shall need to be heard or considered. A statement is calling for a reformation of manners within the political nation and support for controversial politicians at home and abroad has raised many an eyebrow at his appointment, but few would disagree that a fresh face is welcome on the Austrian scene. A gentleman in government, it would seem. A realm of workers. Obviously, we despise a disgusting ideology known as Marxism, but it doesn't mean we hold contempt for our fellow workers. On the contrary, they're champions. They're champions, and the SDAP are a welcome part of our government. We must continue to treat them as the priority and improve their rights. We shall also be known as a true workers' paradise, as opposed to communist dystopia. Research speed, army experience gain. His Majesty is laudable lord. As was always planned, the members of the House of Lords are amicable with the Kaiser, and they're happy to serve him. Thanks to Kalergi's ideas, they have found themselves full of a new spirit, refreshed and bored again on top of this. They agree with and seek to preserve his most valued customs and traditions, thereby preserving the unique character of the Empire. <clears throat> Brothers under the crown. Although our people will fly different flags, hold different beliefs, and are born in different ethnic groups, one thing unites every single citizen of our empire, the Kaiser. 
No longer will Austrians be upheld as the true men of the Empire, all others merely regarded as conquered subjects today. And for all time, we shall stand united under the Holy Kaiser. Also, we have are not involved in Russia. My god, better not be. We're involved in Romania. And their conquest of Transylvania. Social nationalism, progressives versus the Russian Empire. What the heck is going on here? Oh, the Intermarium. Oh, they're all killing each other. <coughs> Building. Baltic German Pact. Edgar Jung. Still in the Fuchs Oh, Baltic General Government. Yeah, not bad. Hmm. Well, yes, we've been busy down here. Quite busy. Trying to get more army XP, air XP. Got quite a bit of uh, political power, too. Great speech. Doesn't give us that much more war support, but you know what? We'll take it. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Overall, we are kind of really ready for whatever ha could happen. Ah. Good job, guys. Lot of lords. Brothers under the crown. Good job. And His Majesty's dynamic deputies. The deputies from the SDAP may be social democrats, but their ultimate loyalty is to the Kaiser. Their purpose within our empires to represent the workers and solve problems in a manner that our more traditional minor representatives might not come up with. They are our loyal supporters, and we love them dearly. That's not a bad Romania. As long as uh, we kind of like them, they like us. Carol II, the legitimate government, of course, for a national renaissance. And we have 38 divisions guarding our entire border, except with, with Italians. Oh. Oh, they actually annexed a few, mate. Oh, that's really good, actually. Quite good for us. There you go. Nice. Of course, it is 1939, so we must, must be prepared for any eventuality. We have been building up civvies, millies, all the good stuff that we need to build up, so. And we've got quite a bit of artillery to spare as well, so, yeah, artillery. Make us a little more defensive. Give us a little bit more attack and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, we talked about this one. Our uh, shining United States. What wor has worked before shall work again. The United States of America is a fully federalized, and as a result, they have minimal attention and increased cooperation between state governments so far. Instead, all races, creeds, religions, and territories work together for a unified and prosperous America. We shall emulate that success here in a brand new United States of Austria. Well, I don't want to say everything's peaceful there, but you know, it could be worse. Rally the nation, more political power, more despotism. Yeah, I don't mind just getting straight despotism. Construction speed, screw it, why not? What, is, what else are we going to do? Every neighboring country, appeal to neighbors, why not? Uh, build a surplus, sure, why not? Um, you know what? We lose war support, which I don't want to lose any more war support. Army XP gain, air XP gain, army XP. Good stuff, good stuff. Because, like I said earlier, we got nothing else to do with our PP except go to a higher conscription level and talk about trade laws. Whoops. Well, whatever. Our Majesty's subservient council. Gives you. Quite a bit more uh, army XP gain and research speed. Above all, our legislature is obedient. They may suggest improvements and tweaks to the ideas of the Kaiser, but actual opposition is basically non-existent. On one side of the Reichsrat are His Majesty's loyal cheerleaders, and on the other are uh, those who cheer slightly less enthusiastically. Either way, in the great game of Austrian politics, the Kaiser wins. And that's what matters, my friends. As long as the Kaiser wins in the end. Now let's go and grab some more entrenchment. That'd be good. Ooh, what happened here? I was just clicking enter. Oh. Oh. And tomorrow I'm still struggling there, which is fine. We don't really care. Words of leader is gone. Whatever. Great speech. War support, why not? Rally the nation. Arts consumer goods a little bit. It's alright. <coughs> Natural posturing. Nah. Naval training programs. Build neighbors. Why not? Because right now we get a total one and a half political power rate. The Carolingian Kaisertum. Ooh, what is this? Austria is the last remnant of the whole old Holy Roman Empire. Our Kaiser has also claimed the Carolingian crown, and now our empire reflects the greatness of the HRE. A deeply devoted people, a properly administered monarchy, and a grand emperor shall all lead us to Holy Roman prosperity. Onwards, Carl, you second Charlemagne. Onwards, Carl the Great. We are ready to strike the red menace and reunite our empire. Which would be really good. If we can get some allies here, that'd be pretty darn decent. Oh, oh, actually, we probably won't help you out. Send some volunteers. We can send two this time. Not bad. Um, send a second Matineo. Alright. What and who can we send? 40. Not great. And I'll get sent his cast. Okay, then. Um, well, that's the case. Okay. <coughs> 
Oh, that's, that's good to get. Mini 39, of course. War should be popping off soon. We don't really need tanks. I mean, we could make some flame tanks, maybe. Won't be too expensive to make. Eh, get some medium tanks anyways, because you can. For now. What is this? Ah. Better infantry equipment was uh, very nice. Improved lighting chassis. Hmm. Ah, uh, but we need the actual artillery gun. Artillery gun. Flamethrower on here, so. And I believe that comes with this level 2. Yeah, flame tank company, so. Carolingian Empire. Please, un. Danka. Beta un danka. Hey! This green air is not bad. Royal Italian subjects? No. Lothar Rundelek. Do the best you can. He's a very good general. Well, I might be not very good, but pretty darn good general. Ah, you're already there. Indo China here. Up my here. <coughs> you're gonna be very busy. Even though we may be defending Italian soil. It's better than the accelerationists get it. <clears throat> Why not? Why not? I'll probably get some more advisors though. Not going up very much at all right now though. Huh. Ah. Do we get a new focus? An event to read, please? What do we have up here? Construction speed, opinion, output. Nothing? Oh, that's sad. We get nothing here. Except to have time to help out potential future allies. Yeah, I didn't think that would go very well for you. Not put it. <clears throat> National rallies are gone. I guess Austria is maybe not done. Ready to strike the Red Menace. Oh, okay, so here we go. It's now, Istria, Fiume, Sudtirol, and Trentino is now core. Get a war goal against Fiume, so we were too late for that one. Assured domination of the Balkans against Yugoslavia. That sounds very dangerous. Crush the Hungarian traitors. War goal against all these guys. Slovak Council. <clears throat> well, that's not good. Top of the ambitious Romanians. That would be bad, but it seems like the only thing we can really do is assure domination over the Baltic. Or not Baltics, but Balkans. So, we'll try it. We'll see what we can do. And for the little god, I hope they don't call in their allies. Oh, I just realized Bulgaria's gone. They're probably a puppet of these guys. Oh. Accelerations versus revisionist socialists. That doesn't really add up to me, but whatever. And there you go. Some flame tanks. Hey, we'll see. Good to go? Let's save. Zurich. Why are you... I love the mustache. Helmet's very nice. I don't remember the last time I saw a yellow Switzerland. Um, socialist model, huh? Barbarian might. French military mission, underground production, legacy of Bogo Mills. It's not bad, it's pretty good. Let's go sciences. Excavation 3. Now I have our soldiers coming back, which is fine. Hopefully, we do okay here. <clears throat> I know it's all infantry, but still. And it's great that it expands our border with the Hungarians, but whatever. We'll deal with it for now. Just join the front. <clears throat> Force it. They, if they want to literally die there, I'm okay with that. They cannot, will not stop us all. You guys go here. Can we be greedy? Maybe? 
Yes? Oh boy. The complete encirclement? It's not going to be lasting very long, probably. But hey, you never know. Alright. Of course, the capital's still over there, but still, whatever. I didn't think that actually worked. We get all the way to the coast. Holy crap. We've lost quite, 40, quite a few. 45,000 is quite a few. We did force the attack for a while, too, so. Centinesia? Oh, if you don't know about that, please go right ahead. Season villages full of barbarians. It's our goal to snuff them out. Can't go to war economy. Go to extensive. No other focuses here, huh? Kinda sucks. Air production? Air training? Makes by promoted? That has no effect. Okay, that's not good then. Construction engineering? I guess we could do resistance suppression. Sophia? Don't tell me they have, uh. Take the cats. Oh, there they go. Civilian oversight. Replace it with that. It's still fine. Uh, for now, it's fine. These cavalry divisions. Uh, division. Well, can we release them? Uh, great speech. Well, we don't have to. Take back the Adriatic. Help destroy Italy, I guess. If we really want to do that. Hungarian, Slovak councils. Or we topple ambitious Romanians. We did help them out. Puppet war goal? I don't know, man. I don't know. We do have access to the coast now, which is very nice as well. More casts? Well, we don't have to do it. We just at least get them done. <clears throat> Happy 1940, everybody. Basic medium tanks. Eh, probably can wait for that. Expert. We were friends, but we've uh, shifted our policies. How many divisions do they have? Well, I have only 24. We have 50. Why are they so weak? We need way more divisions. Where we're headed. We need way more manpower too. So, um, grab some more of that. You'll need some more sport companies, especially with all the resistance we're gonna have. I wish just wish Austria was more done. That's all. But that's good for Eric's speed. Look at all that. Just shooting straight up. I love it. Actually, we have 800 some anti air. We could use a little bit more anti air in all honesty. A more artillery. We need way more resources too. Oof. Well, this economy might be really good to go to. War economy would be better. Um, hope we get enough compliance fast enough. Ooh. Infantry specialist? Sure. Can I actually hire you? Yes! Yes! Oh, Ferdinand Shona. And every timeline you're around, aren't you? You might just want to cut them off. There you go. Next, taking out the mountains a little slightly easier. Uh, grab some more coordination. That'd be good. Guatemala's gone. Goodbye, Guatemala. We're done production. That's not bad. Uh, emergency provisions. Construction speed plus 7% ain't bad either. War room. Wait. Command power. Oh, heck yeah. Propaganda stuff. Why not? Oops. I know we we're supposed to only puppet them, but you know, if things happen. If you guys line up along here, and we create a whole other army that can help defend against that area, that'd be really great. That'd be fantastico. Like this. Kaito? Yes. It's only one division for now, but you know, we'll work on it. 
And, uh, yeah. Rommel Detail. There. That's all you need. Two divisions. That's it. Two divisions have an amazing army. Ah, two divisions. Nice. Friends, boom. Pretty good general. Pretty darn decent. I mean, I'd love to go to war with them. Fume, which is not alive right now. Well, actually, they will be very soon. Um, honestly, I'm gonna wait for these guys to kill each other off. League Solar, because once these two guys go to war with each other, we might actually go to war with both at the same time. Uh, it. Uh, you know what? It might be best to go to war with Italy now. I don't think we can ally with them. And if this way we go to war with them, we can grab our cores, which will be super, 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 super important to grab our cores. Um, so yeah. Our power goes down, despotism goes down, I do all that stuff for fun. There you go. Oh! The core state. <clears throat> oh, Italo Balbo, just hold on so I can kill you off. Because these are our cores. Thrist is ours. <coughs> we'll take as much as we can of these group that we possibly can, so. This expression, how is it looking right now? Honestly, it's not looking too bad. It could be looking a lot worse. And also, before I forget, what are we building up? Roads? Oh my god, we got some really good roads here in the Austrian Empire. Oh my goodness, one way or another, we got Yugoslavia back. Look at all this stuff. Um, so, yeah. Germany is going to be a little bit more difficult to fight. Just being honest with you. you know, I think everyone kind of knows that probably by now. Um, get that there too. Um, grab some more of that and grab some more of this too. Beautiful. Well... Sorry to do it to you, Austria, and I know, or not, uh, Italy, uh, but, you know, if you're going to die anyways, miles at your body. Doesn't mean we have to go to war with them. We might have to. I want Fiume in the end. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Sure, guys, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be peace for that stuff. Yeah, sure, whatever. Are we missing anything? Honestly, no. Honestly, we'll probably just need... Oh! Well, there they go. Uh, Wild Spears? Pretty cool. Uh, once we build some more of this stuff up, like radar stations and whatnot. Yeah. Take a look, see what's going on here. If we can slither through and take the Italians as our, as our dudes, that'd be a lot of fun. Oh my god, come on. What the heck? No! Why Why did the game do that? What the heck? Jesus, what the crap is going on? Hold on. Oh, that's so dumb. They're screwing us over. I hate the frontline system sometimes. It's just so unmanageable. It's annoying, it's unmanageable, and it just does not work sometimes. Well, we got cucked out of that one. That sucks. Germany does seem to be doing quite well. We already have 13 divisions on this border as well. Not bad. Not bad for them really at all. The Filipino Technate. They are just barreling through there. Okay, in all honesty, if you want this, I will let them, once the war is over, I'll give them that territory back, but we're gonna... We're taking, we're taking stuff here. I want them to lose a little bit more land first. Before anything else happens, but I think we need maybe slightly more time because we don't have enough divisions on the on front line here. We're getting there, but we're just not quite there. One solid push from us might might be enough to capitulate them, but once we do that though, then we might be okay. But I think I'll say this for the next episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will go to war with the German Socialist Rata Republic. Thanks for watching, have a great, oh crap, rest of your day.